Hey everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with some quick gameplay for a video that's probably about a month old at this point. But we did do a deck guide on, um, whoops, all spells. And while the deck has had a bit of resurgence within the last month and variations of the deck have popped up that are a little bit different than this, um, this is still kind of the traditional uh, pseudo version of the deck, what it brings to the table. Um, you're looking at, obviously, a deck that, obviously, has no lands in it. It's more about worried about casting its um, either under city informer or balustrade spy, uh, using some matter of main acceleration, either talisman of dominance, pentad prism, sphere of the suns. Uh, get one of these into play, mill over your entire deck. Uh, hit your opponent with a bunch of creeping chills. Hit your opponent with a bunch of venge vines. Kill them quickly. Um, that's generally your game plan. Game one, game two. Sometimes you pivot to either anti hate stuff like we have Void Snares in the sideboard or Counter Spells, or you just pivot to a game plan that revolves more around Goblin Charbelcher, hard casting that, and then trying to win with that. Um, obviously, there is the other backup plan of Memories, Journey, Journey Thassa's Oracle. Um, I kind of found that to be a little bit redundant, as generally this game plan is good enough, especially game one, and you want access to the Belchers. Um, this is certainly a deck I want to explore more of. Uh, while the gameplay is rather simplistic, I think there's some fine tuning that can be done with this deck to make it potentially competitively viable again. But you're not here for me to talk about the deck right now, you're here to see some gameplay. So let's get into some games. All right, gameplay, game one. You're looking for a rather simplistic hand. Obviously that hand was a mulligan. This hand is also a mulligan. We don't have one of our combo pieces. Um, this hand kind of has to be keep, although obviously not the best because we have no accelerator, but we still have three mana sources and a balustrade spy, so I think we have to keep this one. Um, do that. Probably should have played Maliki Rebirth actually on one. Uh, turn one. Okay, play that. Now we have our four mana sources. As long as we don't get thought seized or something. Put the shocks in. Does nothing. We play out the sword because we need some amount of artifacts in play for when. Uh, yeah, you'll see the combo here in a sec. All right, Balustrade Spy, mill ourselves, uh, reveal our entire deck. Basically, our entire deck's in the graveyard at this point. Um, go ahead and use the Narc Amoebas to bring back the... Um, Narc Amoebas are going to bring back Sword of the Meeks. Sword of the Meeks makes sure that we can bring back um, Salvage Titan. Uh, Salvage Titan allows you to exile three artifact cards from Graveyard, turn it to your hand, and then you may sacrifice three artifacts rather than pay the spell's mana cost. So what this does is that gives you your second creature for cast Venge for Vengevine. So we do that, bring back Salvage Titan, Sacrifice the artifacts, cast Salvage Titan, get a bunch of Vengevine triggers, and then unless the opponent has two removal or three removal spells on the spot, they're just kind of dead. So, um, one alternative version that used to see play is you could play one of copy of um, the oh, seven mana take turn spell. I'm drawing a blank on it right now. Over um, a copy of Memory's Journey. But uh, Nexus of Fate, this card. But this does make for a decent backup plan. But it's going to game two. Not really having seen a whole lot of what our opponent's doing, but John Color Lands can probably suspect John Midrange. So one of the bigger tricks of sideboarding with a deck like this is understanding what your opponent's hate might be. Jund, your hate probably is going to come down to three possibilities. The first being Endurance, probably the most likely version that you see. Uh, Leland in the Void is also a possibility. And the third one is obviously in addition to discard spells, something like scavenging ooze, although that is by far a distant third compared to the other two. So that in mind, uh, you tend to shave cards off the combo, not actually um, go all in. So we brought in one of our copies of Char Belcher. Um, we brought in uh, the Leyline of Sanctities and sideboarded out just some random stuff. Uh, one of Copy of Grief, one of the Sphere of the Suns, the Shatter Skull Summon I tend to board out a lot just because it's so awkward. Um, and then we shaved a Malachi Rebirth and a Creeping 
or a uh, creeping chill. But alas, okay, this hand, um, just looking at from a pure castability standpoint, we have the three lands, we have an Undercity Informer, actually the four lands, Undercity Informer. This hand's probably a keep, um, although it is obviously, I chose not to keep it, which is interesting, I guess, because it didn't have acceleration. Um, this hand has a lot of what we want, although pitching Phantasmagoria is probably the best bet, or Avenge Vine. Um, we have two lands, an Accelerator, so put back Phantasmagorium and that. So when it goes turn one, strike it rich. So maybe we kind of guessed the wrong deck. Maybe they are Jund Creativity rather than um, just Jund Midrange. When it goes turn one, Bitter Reunion. So, unless they have an Endurance rolled up here, they're just kind of dead. Cast under, under City Informer, and the opponent concedes. So, one of the nice things about this deck is your wins are pretty clean. Um, you know, you're not trying to make a ton of micro decisions. The downside of that is you don't have a whole lot of agency over it, so your mulliganing and your sideboarding skills are kind of what matters. So... Not unakin to some of the other combo decks, but it's a lot more simplistic than uh, Belcher and um, Neo Brand can be. Uh, Belcher, obviously the Belcher hands are pretty simple, but the um, the one that allows you to stack your deck that I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head, a little bit more difficult. And then um, Neo Brand has a lot of complications, has always had a lot of complications just based on card quantity in your deck, um, statistics, that kind of stuff. So this, of the, of the three decks that got hit by Simeon Spirit Guides banning, um, this is probably the one, or the three, like turn one, turn two decks that got hit by that. Um, this is probably the sim most simplistic deck to play in terms of uh, what you're doing. All right, we're back here for match number two. Uh... All right, so this hand is pretty reasonable overall for this deck. Um, we have a Malachi Rebirth into a Marius Call into Pentad Prism. We have two copies of our Milling Things. The only downside of this hand is the copy of Vengevine in our hand. Um, but we do have ways, I believe Phantasmagorium allows you to pitch this. So we'll definitely keep uh, opponent leads on turn one Misty Rainforest into Watery Grave. Uh, Thought seizes one of our threats away. So my mind is thinking blue, black, death, shadow at this point. Play the Pentad Prism. Could obviously get Spell Pierce, but we just kind of have to jam, especially game one. They go to 12. Cycle of Straight Wraith into death, shadow. We just kind of have to jam game one. They have counter spell. Um, it's possible I shouldn't have conceded quite yet, but the odds of drawing a... Uh, relevant spell in time is pretty low so we have six outs left in our deck um and obviously if our opponent has another counter spell or a drown the lock i guess drown the lock wouldn't be turned on yet but if they have another counter spell we'd just be dead so probably was worth playing another turn or two but we did concede and this deck just kind of wins or loses pretty quickly overall all right back for game number two look at sideboarding kind of boarded out some a lot of stuff we boarded in the copies of pact of negation and at least one of the copies of char belcher so it'll be interesting to see how this game plays out the problem when you're up against death shadow specifically is they have the combined disruption of uh thought seas and um counter spells uh this hand has the pact of negation um we have None of our lands, so I think this hand's a pretty easy mulligan. That hand is also a mulligan, apparently. This hand has none of our combos in it, so we're going to four. Um, this hand, I'm mulligan to four, probably keep one of these two. Put back Vengevine, Pact of Negation, and one of the lands. 
So, yep. Let's put a line and pass. There goes turn one, dot sees, takes our balustrade spy. We just continue to play land drops. They thought to use take one of our lands. Pact of negation here. We draw a balustrade spy. Now we just need to draw another mana source. Sphere of the Suns kind of counts. Opponent does dress down, which is only effective against half the combo here. Uh, this is one of those situations where we kind of get to win the counterspell war with Pact of Negation, and the opponent's just dead, so. It makes us go through the motions, Creeping Chills, get a Narc Amoeba into play, get the Swords into play, bring back, yep, Creeping Chill you, put you to one, and opponent concedes, Salvage Titan, do the Vengevine thing, etc. Alright, back for game three. Sideboarding really doesn't change much. Um, maybe some adjustments were made to the cards we boarded out, but uh, this hand, we have Balustrade Spy, we have two lands and a Pentad Prism, as well as a Force of Negation, or Pack of Negation, so this hand's probably an easy keep. Uh, opponent goes, let me guess, turn one Thought Seize again. Yep. Takes our Bellastrid Spy. We draw another mana source. Punk goes. Turn to Death Shadow. We cast Pentad Prism and pass. Punk starts smacking us for all we're worth. There's a dress down, which seems like an odd time to play it, but. We draw a Goblin Char Belcher. Uh, the opponent has to find a way to try to kill us here. Or, okay, so they can put us to one, and now they die during our upkeep. So, Char Belcher for the win. So, I think at this point in the league, I was 3 0, feeling pretty good. And then we had. A really insane match number four. Obviously the third match you'll see in this set. I hope you appreciate it as it's a bit of a slog for this deck, but it was a very interesting matchup. All right, we're back on the draw, unfortunately. One, two, three. Four mana sources, but no payoff, no land, or no acceleration. Um, this time we have one, two, and acceleration, so we just need a third land, so... And it's probably a keep. Put back Phantasmagorium. That leads on turn one Scalding Tarn. So this is a common opening in the format at this point. Could be we're tied or whatnot, but the Xander's Lounge indicates that it's more likely to be creativity in the run-in ticks. We play our acceleration and pass. When it does, Asaju. And at this point, we're kind of locked out because one of the downsides of this nonsense is uh, you don't play any basic lands, or actually you don't play any lands in your deck whatsoever. So, besides you gunning down your lands means you have no mana sources, and you have to hit four mana to win the game. So, props to our opponent for seeing that line. Um, if we were just playing normal creativity game plan that didn't involve this, especially game one, the only card that remotely matters is Spell Pierce. And Spell Pierce doesn't actually stop the combo, so... <laughs> Anyways, on to game number two. Alright, so going up against five-color creativity, most likely, or at least blue-based creativity. Um, Pact of Negation is really the card you want, so... You know, fighting over Fluster Storms, that kind of stuff. Um, Veil of Summers, etc. And then, obviously, bringing in Char Belchers, just in case they have, like, some type of graveyard hate. Uh, this hand has everything we want, as well as a grief to clear the way. Uh, Memory's Journey, not the greatest in our hand, but could potentially buy us time um, as far as milling ourselves. Uh, we have one, two, three mana sources. So I think this hand overall is pretty good. <laughs> one, 
sets to four. And keeps. We just play our land pass. Opponent does nothing. Plays Blood Crypt. Play our Sphere of the Suns. We go ahead and deal with our Hallowed Moonlight, which could have caused problems. Uh, they just go running ticks here. Buy back a land. We top deck the fourth land. Under City Informer. And that's the game, friends. <laughs> and the opponent concedes. So, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. So I want to say before this game that, you know, when you're playing a deck like this, there isn't, you're not going to see a ton of variation of ga how games play out when you win and lose. But this one has a rather unique conclusion that I hope you all enjoy one way or another. So, this hand, we have a Charbelcher, we have Balustrade Spy, a couple of Force of Negate, or Pack of Negations. Don't think we can risk keeping the one lander. Um, my past self agrees with me. This hand has a lot of the same things going on. Um, we don't have a payoff though, so we probably have to mulligan further. This hand has the Undercity Informer payoff. We have Benjamin Sword to go back, so I think I end up keeping this one. So, overall, seems like a pretty standard hand. Um, draw our fourth mana source, so we pretty much have everything lined up. When it does nothing, we jam Talisman of Dominance here. Opponent spell pierces it. Like I said, one of their few relevant things in game number one. Um, they cast Run and Ticks. We ta tap that and pass. Okay. Now, notably, we don't have black mana, so I should maybe not have kept this hand. So. back their land. We get the Charbelcher, so we play Charbelcher here. Opponent does their thing. Cast a four mana. ending here we try to pack the negation it they veil of summer and <laughs> we don't draw a black source and we're gonna be in a lot of trouble and the fact that they have the run ultimate going here it's going to cause us problems. So, play Sphere of the Suns, hoping we get to untap with it. Point Ley Line Bindings. Which obviously, normally wouldn't be relevant, but. And then we just draw turn times and Meiosis. So, kind of annoying, but, you know, I guess on a Mulligan to 5, I was thinking we'll just draw a Black Source eventually anyway, and the fact that they had Prismatic Ending for 4 for our Talisman of Dominant, or. For our uh, char vulture, you know, or they could have had a leyline biting potentially in the hand. We don't know if they had access to that as well. But uh, well, that, that was kind of interesting that we this was one of the matches we didn't lose to like graveyard hate or hallowed moonlight. We actually lost to permanent based hate. One of the downsides of switching to one of the alternative uh, threat bases. So the one thing I will say after working on the deck a little bit. Um, is there's a couple of things that I probably wanted to change with the deck a little bit. Uh, I really like a simplistic approach with decks like this. Um, you know, this Memories Journey, Thassa's Oracle doesn't feel entirely necessary. Um, the Shatter Skull Summit doesn't really feel like it adds anything to the deck. So I would probably want to add another Palaka Predation and the two copies of Grief. Um, Maybe we're supposed to leave in the memory's journey. Not sure. 
I'd like to move the Belcher to the sideboard and then have a situation where we have the four copies of Grief and two copies of Palak Predation as kind of our counter spell plan or anti counter spell plan game number one. Uh, maybe fixing the mana a little bit. Now, obviously, if you look at this list, you have four copies of Malachi Rebirth. Uh, you have these 12, 16 mana sources. So you have, this would give you 22 mana sources overall, um, in addition to the Pentad Prisms and the Sphere of the Suns, Talisman of Dominance. Um, so I know the Thassa's Oracle plan is really good, but it's kind of like a slower plan. And I think game number one, you just want to be as fast as possible. I think as far as fixing the sideboard, um, I'd probably get, obviously, with moving the other Grief to the main deck, um, still go bring in the third char, char Belcher. So you kind of have this like alternative game plan of you could leave one of the Char Belchers in the main deck and be able to board up to four of them, or you could just have access to the three Char Belchers in the sideboard as kind of your alternative game plan, not really mess with the Narcos Beavis, Thassa's Oracle version. Um, obviously, that leaves you a little bit more vulnerable to certain hate, um, Thassa's Oracle can play around things like Sanctifier and Beck and such. Um, so, not entirely sure, but would definitely be interested in running this deck back and working on it a little bit. I know some other people were iterating more on the Thassa's Oracle Memories Journey plan, but I find often that the uh, Vengevine um, Balustrade stop by plan is usually pretty, or Vengevine Creeping Chill plan is usually good enough um, in a lot of matchups. So. That's my two cents on the deck so far. Um, obviously, this is a deck that doesn't see a ton of play in the format. Uh, was more prevalent once the Spirit Guide was a thing, but it's certainly a deck that it's a turn three combo deck potentially. Um, not a lot of agency over what it does, but makes for some fast leagues. Uh, comes up with some interesting scenarios every once in a while. So, if you like a little bit of an offbeat deck or something that doesn't require a lot of thinking, this deck could certainly be for you. Um, and, you know, it's not something people see a lot of anymore. May not really know how to play against it a ton, so. Or the odd interactions, like Phantasmagorium, um, you know, allowing you to discard cards from your hand, like, you know, extra copies of Vengevine and such, or the Salvage Titan interaction. So, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like modern content, and hope to see you for our next video.